Well, hey, good day. Good day. Welcome to Roots. Yeah, good day, you mate. Oh, Is you're it? Australian today? Oh, that's what I was aiming for. Okay, good. I, I love like Australians. It. Yeah, are we trending there? Uh, don't know if we got a single soul, but I'm but positive. Probably now. I'm positive we're shaping the nation. <laughs> So we're the podcast that focuses on things that are not seen, i.e., example, those things that are under the ground. Right. And roots are are actually um, produced what? Above the ground or underground? No. Underground. That's where we're living. It's the unseen life, Dwayne. And so the unseen life is that what dictates, drives, and actually impacts the seen life. Yeah. And most of us often focused on the seen life. I got to change these things. I got to... I got to look better, bigger, beautiful, more. Right. But that's not where it goes, is it, Jen? No, it isn't, Dwayne. He's focusing on the roots because when the roots are healthy, then the fruit is healthy. And we need sustainable roots. So when a strong wind comes, we're not uprooted. When difficulties come, we're not uprooted. When a winter season comes, our roots are going even deeper to find nutrients deep, deep down. So there's something beautiful about having a strong root system. I mean, it's just, you know, uh, because it really is, you know, your roots are your, it's your soul and yeah. your spirit. Yeah. And so your spirit man is alive now if you have said yes to Jesus. And so that needs to be fed, mm-hmm. enriched, mm-hmm. Uh, communion with God, that your spirit needs to be fed, but as well, and as well, your your soul, so your, your emotions mm-hmm. and because your emotions so define you, what you think about yourself, what you mm-hmm. think about others, has em- emotion, massive emotional yeah. in- implication, and then also just your your uh, your intellect, your thinking, your mind, right. your thoughts. And this, I mean, this isn't what we're going to talk about, but this is counterculture to what's going on in society today. Mm-hmm. I mean, everything is about what you see. Everything is about followers. It's it's shocking to me how. Instagram has turned everyone into an authority on something. Facebook. Watch out, you guys. Jennifer's got energy, and I see it rising. <laughs> we just brought up Instagram. It's rising. It's rising. And it is it is easy. With a little marketing touch, with a little bit of zip, anyone can have a voice today, which in some ways is awesome because we all should have a voice. But sometimes... The, the voices that are shaping culture and society are not voices that are rooted. They're not voices that have a lot of substance. It's Or truth. Or truth. It's yeah. flashy. It's good. It's beautiful design, beautiful pictures, you know, uh, blah, blah, blah. So but this it, may not look sexy. For sure. But it is. Whoa. Whoa. Um is that R-rated and we should tell people to let their children listen? Yeah, because that word sexy, that'll just conjure up images. Uh, oh, no, yeah. oh, no, oh, no, oh, <laughs> so, no. I just got clean. <laughs> I just got clean. <laughs> That's hilarious. So, but also, you know, it's, um, if you find a certain amount of applause, for lack of a better term, or affirmation from friend not affirmation, I'm going to use that word better in a different place. <laughs> uh, but if you... If your identity is rooted outside of yourself and, and in the opinions of men. Yeah, but if the opinions Hashtag of men... That. But if your opinions of men are, are up right now, you right. got instead of 10 people, you got 500 uh-huh. people, you're going to figure out, and it's not even consciously, but subconsciously, how do I maintain this face and this facade? For sure. And so it's only focusing on exterior. Right. Yeah, we we don't even fully understand the impact of our social media life yet. I mean, there are studies. Oh, for sure. The ramification, what it's producing and the the dopamine that goes off in your brain when someone likes a post Mm. that that's crazy, man. So you can get addicted to the praise of man easily 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 and so if you even now more than ever it is important essential crucial to have a root system in god i feel like that whole dopamine conversation is the enemy has used it you know and i really believe this it's just i think it's a tactic of of the dark side if you will um (laughs) like darth vader or (laughs) no like Satan, Less Darth Vader. like Satan and his cohorts, <laughs> to really um, create a shallow people that will follow something 
totally deceptive. Yes, yes. Because you're so blinded by so many different things, mm-hmm. and that's troublesome to me. It and is some troublesome. people might think Dwayne Neslo, you're out there, mm-hmm. and I, I absolutely, absolutely, absolutely do not think I'm out there. Right, I and agree. I, I, and I think. Um, it takes conviction out of people because now we have heard conviction. Mm-hmm. We, okay, yeah. this won't get me in trouble if I stand for this. This Because everyone else is saying this. Yeah. And so it, it, it dumbs down the voice of a believer or, or, or just a voice of an individual, of a free thinker even. Yeah. And so in this case, someone with biblical values. Yes. It's, it's dumbing down society because we have created... A, a culture where we like to be liked and and it's it's a little terrifying yeah so let's talk about Christian dopamine let's talk let's about talk that. about Bible dopamine <laughs> too bad if you're lonely listening because we had some incredible facial expressions that are now that we're breaking forth but oh I, and we both have hats on for those that aren't watching that's kind of important <laughs> but um so um, if you would turn in your Bible with me, turn if you will. That's what turn if you saying. will to um, Isaiah fifty four. Excuse me, Isaiah forty two. I apologize. Are we um, going to turn to our neighbor and say anything? No, not at this time. Okay. Um, so all of this, um, I got to give a, a ton of credit to my my friend Alan Hood, and uh, he's the one that just kind of brought this this these couple of verses to us. We were in a conversation recently with them and him and his wife and. I've been just musing and meditating in this. Yeah. And and so, you know, how do you get formed and in what forms you? Mm-hmm. And so we've just been talking about those that are being formed by external voices. Yeah. And so I want to just draw your attention here for a second. So um, a, a, a very important verse here. I'm going to steal your Bible for a second here. Go ahead. I think a very important verse that is foundational to all of us um well i don't know why i'm using your bible anyways but john john 17 here's here's the here's the one of the the premises that we're going to be talking from today um you know it's that incredible prayer in john 17 and then i just i just want to turn here because i want to make sure i get this right um verse 23 i am them and you and me that they may be made perfect in one that the world may know that you have sent me. And so Jesus is saying, um, the work that we're going to do, you and me, Father, it's going to create a maturity slash perfection, and unity is going to be formed, and they're going to say, it's only by the grace of God, it's only by the power of God that you have matured the church, and Mm -hmm. she's in unity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're going to see God, Jesus in this. But here's the next phrase I want you to pay attention to and have loved them as you have loved me and so jesus is praying father the same way that you have loved me you have loved them them as us them as us so he's praying for um the disciples he had and those that were following me at the time but he also says and those that you will give me Mm-hmm. And so you are included in the prayer of John 17. And then he's praying to the Father, and he says, Father, the same way that you have loved me is the same way that you have loved them. Mm-hmm. And so um, if you've never seen that verse, sit there for a year. Mm-hmm. It's powerful, mm-hmm. okay? Like the same way the uncreated Father, mm-hmm. who actually the emotion of love began with, divine affection, mm-hmm great delight upon his son jesus he right. has that yeah the most richest um relationship in eternity is mm-hmm. between the trinity mm-hmm. and then jesus says, saints those that are going to follow me the same way the father loves me he loves you okay so that's the premise that's the verse that we're now going to have our discussion around Isaiah 42 and then into the book of Matthew. But here's what Isaiah prophesies. And this is now a prophecy over Jesus. Um, actually, I was on a call yes, two days ago where Stuart Griefs in Kansas City was talking about this. And he was talking about justice. This is actually a, a chapter about justice mm-hmm. where Jesus is going to bring justice and make everything 
right in the earth. Yeah. And that has only been partially done, but I'm telling you the return of Jesus is about bringing justice to the earth. Mm-hmm. Every, everything that is unjust, every system, every form of of uh, leadership is going to be brought low mm-hmm. and a just leadership slash government is going to rule the earth but here's what he says in verse verse one so he says behold so everybody take a pause my servant whom i uphold mm-hmm. so this is him this is the father prophesying speaking forth about jesus and who he and who he will be but here he goes i uphold him so the same way the father loves Jesus, he loves you. And he goes, behold my servant, whom, whom I uphold, I strengthen. Hmm. Look at this next phrase. My elect one in whom my soul delights. It's beautiful. So he's looking at Jesus, his servant, and that's how he's defining him in this role yeah. of bringing justice. And he goes, my soul delights in him. Mm-hmm. This is this is profound. Mm-hmm. Um, I've put my spirit upon him, and he will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. So he's he's looking at his son, and he goes, "Oh, I delight in my servant. Mm-hmm. I delight when I look at the one who's going to bring forth justice to the earth. Mm-hmm. My soul." Mm-hmm. Uh, excuse me, you know, it delights in him. This is my son. Mm-hmm. This, you know, and so this, this is, this is profound, I believe, to the work that actually Jesus did because, you know, and then verse two, he will not cry out nor raise his voice. And Jennifer and I actually prayed through this and talked through this maybe last week it was. Yeah. But he goes, in the midst of mistreatment, Mm -hmm. he's not going to call down 12 legions of angels. Mm -hmm. He can. He could have. I mean, Jesus said that when he was being taken. He's not going to cry out, or he's not going to cause his voice to be heard. Mm -hmm. And then it speaks of his pastoral, tender, kind heart. A bruised reed he will not break. Those that are are broken, those Mm -hmm. that are, are bruised in their in who they are he goes mm-hmm. he's not going to come in to just break them dismantle mm-hmm. them grind them into a rock mm-hmm. a smoking flax he will not quench mm-hmm. so in his f- in his pursuit of bringing forth justice he's not going to bring damage to those who are leaning into him mm-hmm. but this one this is where alan brought this to me he goes he will not fail and he will not be discouraged mm-hmm. so the 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 I think we just lack understanding mm-hmm. of that, those hours, those hours leading up to the cross yeah. and then on the cross. Mm-hmm. But he's not going to actually fail. Yeah. And he's not going to say, I don't know if I can do this. Right. I mean, much of my life has been, my gosh, this is hard. I don't know if I can finish. Uh-huh. You know, the tasks in front of us. Right, right. So. There, uh, sorry, I don't want to interrupt you. No, go ahead. Turn. Well, I'm just saying there's a level of confidence we can have in Jesus because he he did endure the oh, cross. Oh, gosh, yes. And so, you know, like Hebrews 12 when it says, consider him in your struggle against sin, consider him. So already just stop. Consider Jesus who, you know, was was tempted in every way, d- mistreated, da 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 and yet did not sin. Yeah. And so it's not to shame us to consider him. Not at all. Him. No. The, it's actually to look to him, how can I do it? Exactly. Yeah. Because that life that he lived, that mm-hmm. overcoming power, that same power that raised Jesus from the dead, yeah. is in me. Absolutely. Christ in me is my hope of glory. Amen. We forget so easily that we have full access to overcoming, sustaining divine power, and we're the temple, and he's made his home in us. Amen. It, it's, it's poetic. It's, oh, I'm the temple. You know, it's a children's song. We forget the, power the dignity, yes. the power, yes. what we have access to yep. in God. Amen. And that this is the God that doesn't break a bruised reed, and yes. he won't 
you know, stamp out even a flickering flame. Yep. And so I, I mean, I just want to hit that for a minute. I don't want to hijack. I'm just, that could make me cry for days. Mm. A bruised reed he will not break yep. and a smoking flax he will not quench. Yeah. So many times in my walk with the Lord, I have felt too broken to continue and therefore I will disqualify myself. Or where'd that fire go, Jennifer? Where's that girl who was on fire? Uh -huh. And I, I look at my life very differently than how the Lord looks at my life. Absolutely. I look at it right now today, and he's looking at it a billion years from now in perfect obedience with hindsight that's been divinely edited by his grace and blood. Yes. And so I'm so quick to rule myself out. And when I remember this, when I remember the God who doesn't take a broken person and grind them into dust and blow them off into oblivion, mm -hmm. but he says, no, I'm not going to crush that. Right. In fact, it goes on. I mean, Isaiah 61, he will actually heal that. Yeah. He'll heal the brokenhearted. There's something so beautiful about the nature of God that we see played out here and he doesn't quit until it's accomplished. Amen. Ah, that's a thank you, God. Yeah. Go on. And that's just, I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. I wanted to clear my voice so it would be crystal clear in its suaviness. <laughs> <laughs> suave. I like it. You are so suave. Not S suave, but suave. Suave. Yeah, I like it. So, um, Everyone who's listening to, to this has has felt discouragement mm -hmm. and has more than likely failed at something. Yeah. And if you haven't failed at something, just live a little longer. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> okay. True. It's humanity. It's where yeah. we're at. Yeah. You know, and so I, I you know, Alan and just him sharing this with me, he was like, listen, <clears throat> the communion between the father and the son most theologians, and I agree with them, is that, you know, Philippians 2 tells us that basically some of the, the uh, not some, but the divine act, strength and activity he, he let go of when he became a man. So he was still God, I believe, in his, in his identity, in his essence. But that divine power, he turned it, he gave it up. And this is where he allowed the Father's voice to strengthen and uphold him. Yeah. And I'm talking about deep, rich communion. Yeah. That became the steadying, strengthening factor in Jesus walking out his ministry. Yeah. And and I don't know if we fully comprehend this, the power of this. I don't. And 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 so, you know, I think, you know, Jennifer and I have been through an interesting season and it's just challenges in life has brought us to a place of brokenness before mm -hmm. the Lord. And I, I have mm -hmm. to give testimony to God's leadership over my life. It yeah. was incredibly hard, but as well, it was so beautiful because it's produced a, a, I had a wrestle and he finally got me pinned and I said, okay, I'm done. Mm -hmm. You know, I, and, and in that moment, I want this revelation, the father's delight over my life. Yeah. And it's not according to to my accomplishments. It's according to he created me and he loves his creation. Yeah. And it's not according to how many people I talk to and not according to my job and my bank account. The father made me and he loves his creation. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. father created Dwayne Roberts and he delights in me yeah. just because he made me. Yeah. And those things that are unique to me, the Father loves about me. The yeah. things that are unique to you, mm -hmm. he delights in this. Mm -hmm. And majority, I believe, of the body of Christ today lives in shame and condemnation when they lift their eyes to the Father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is the plan of the dark side slash Satan and his demonic cohorts. Cohorts. As you said? And, and that has so blinded the body of Christ mm -hmm. that we can't go where Jesus went. Mm -hmm. And I am just so wanting to go where Jesus went. Mm -hmm. You know, and when Jesus went away to those lonely places, mm -hmm. you know, we've got several of those times in the scripture where he went away. And then 
I just, I think those things reorientated Jesus and changed the perception of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And not not changed it, that's not right. I believe that those private conversations strengthened, him. strengthened mm -hmm. him, gave him vision, direction. Mm -hmm. And so when the applause or the venom of humanity came against Jesus, he he was not even at, at all deterred. Mm -hmm. Like like he I He wasn't discouraged. He wasn't discouraged. He did <laughs> not fail in in his mandate at that time. And mm -hmm. so um let's just look at now um because to me I think you know let's look at Matthew chapter 3 we'll go to Matthew chapter 3 and in going there um uh what was it Matthew 3 while you're <clears throat> going there let me just say this you know as a a parent so not everyone has children but as a parent I remember the gush of love I felt for my child. They had done nothing for me. They, they couldn't do anything for me. They were a helpless infant, dependent on me entirely, yet I loved this human being. Um, there's something about that kind of love that is, it, it was selfless. Mm -hmm. It was it, maybe the first time it was fully selfless, like, mm -hmm. whoa. And there's something beautiful in that. It, and I think it paints the picture of we are, we are that to the Lord. Yeah. What, what can I really do that he can't do himself? You know what I mean? 100%. And just. It has nothing to do with accomplishment. Uh-uh. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. I'm his child. My yes. my My firstborn, she was my child. She, I, I remember, I mean, date night now had a different twist. We just stared at the baby we'd created. Went, mm -hmm. my goodness. And loving this little tiny human being. In, in a way that I, I knew, even in my own broken family, I knew my mom still loved me. Totally. She had to. I'm like, this, this can't go away. Maybe she does not express it. Maybe she didn't say it right, da, 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 da. But I was convinced that kind of love doesn't go away. And if, if this is a mirror, if it's a shadow, if it's a type of, the, of God being a father mm -hmm. and I'm his child, yeah. What am I working for? Totally. I already have it. Totally. There's a sense of rest in that that's yep. beautiful. And it's and it's because, you know, um, Jennifer and I, we've been in ton involved in tons of training. And so, you know, when you go to the talk of the curriculum, what always pops up in every conversation is identity. Uh -huh. So that is very much a part of the the curriculum in most most training biblical training school ministries mm -hmm. i.e unto bible college seminary whatever and and so um i believe that that is essential yeah i so i'm in agreement with that you need we need to know who you are my daughter sydney and i had an amazing conversation around identity yesterday so that is essential to who we are but I believe that is only part of the journey that you guys are to go on. Mm -hmm. And and then with your identity, I believe you need to go deeper now into that relationship of father to child. Because look at this. Look at this. Um, Matthew, Matthew chapter 3. And so this is at Jesus' baptism. So Jesus goes from his baptism then into uh, his temptations. In, as we have it recorded here in Matthew. And, you know, um, it was teaching under Mike Bickle that I first really began to stare into this and hear this. And so, you know, Alan was saying, and makes I totally agree with, just this, this verse here has its foundation in Isaiah's 42 proclamation. Proclam Proclamation? My gosh. You're good, bud. This Take is another my, drink of coffee. This is my... This is my my servant, my son, in whom I delight. So verse 20, verse 17, and suddenly a voice came from heaven. So the spirit is descended upon Jesus at his mm -hmm. baptism. And so it's just important when we read, just to pause for a moment. Mm -hmm. So a voice 
It doesn't come from sur- around them, uh-huh. but the voice of the Father breaks into created order. So uh-huh. this was not just a casual passing comment. Right. This was not um, for just those that are paying attention. I believe everybody went, oh my gosh. Yeah. Who is this? Yes. Like it wasn't, it wasn't a, a fleeting comment or observation in the baptism story of Jesus. And so he breaks in with his voice and the thing that he says is first of all this is my beloved son Hmm. and so it's 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 important i think to understand that that now what jesus prayed as the father loves me he loves you yeah so there's going to come a time that you're going to be in the presence of the Holy Father. And I believe there will be a time where he will say these exact same words over you. That's beautiful. And you're going to hear them with your ears. I believe this is in our future. Amen. Jesus, the Father is not spoken over me that way. His voice has not come in and, out of, you know, he's not come into created order. But you're beloved. And beloved means that it is initiated by him and that it will never end. So this love that the Father has is first and foremost initiated by him towards you. And in it's and it's never going to run out. It's never going to end. And that's the prayer of Ephesians 3. The, the, it's unending. The, the length, the breadth, the width, the height. And then he goes, in whom I am well pleased. And, and I don't believe that this well pleased is because of, of what he's done. Right. It was amazing. We were in a Bible. Jennifer was leading a Bible study. I wasn't there. And a young, how old was she? She's like 16, 17. She maybe. goes, she had incredible insight. She goes, he's well, the father's well pleased, but Jesus hasn't done anything yet. This is at the beginning. This mm-hmm. is at his baptism. He hasn't even he hasn't even gone through the temptations yet. No miracles, nothing. So don't say, well, Jesus is God's father. He's incredible. Look what he was going to do. Look what he did. That's not what I believe this is speaking to. It's not speaking to his um, accomplishments. accomplishments. And so d- just... I know that as I'm even talking and, exp- and walking through this, you're talking, you're thinking accomplishments, mm-hmm. you're thinking external looks, you're thinking bank account, you're mm-hmm. thinking failed and, po- and successful. That has nothing to do with what Jesus is experiencing when the voice of the Father breaks over him. Mm-hmm. And it's rich. Mm-hmm. It goes deep. It brings definition. It brings might to him. Yeah. I have the love of my father on me and it's the guiding yeah uh d- it's the guiding defining aspects of of Jesus mm-hmm. and and then what what's interesting to me is that then what comes next is the is the fast unto temptation and I I I just think Jesus is going even through the temptations he's going are you kidding me mm-hmm. like you're offering me these things are you what a joke yeah you're a joke Uh you think i'm going to give you power Uh when i have the voice of the father's approval over who i am and his voice of strengthening me you think i'm going to leave that relationship to join with you you're insane like Mm -hmm. like we don't get that here right you know sometimes i think people have oh jesus had to really wrestle I'm going, no, he did it. Like, Mm -hmm. I just, I don't believe that. Mm -hmm. I think this was so solidified. He's not going to fail or be discouraged. Right, right. Like, he knew what he was here for. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. And I think, now this is maybe a bit of a side point, but, you know, in order for us to love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to (laughs) love our neighbor as ourself, which Jesus reduces down to the two greatest commandments, um, we have to touch this love, this identity, this understanding. This community. Yeah. You can't, I can't work myself into it. Right. And, and I then therefore cannot 
love my brother unless I have this love inside of me to give away, yeah. to pour out on someone else. Yeah. And so in order even to reach my neighbor, mm -hmm. I have to be exposed, dwell, abide, live in this divine affection. Yes. Otherwise, it's just humanism. I can't do it. Yeah. I, I need this because the love that we're supposed to show to other people is, the, is like the same love that we've received. And the, it's exactly the same. It's the, exactly the same. And the only way I can get it is go to the source. Yes. Otherwise, I'm fake. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm quoting moral things. I'm quoting totally. right statements. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, saying nice words, but it's shallow. Right. If I want to love my neighbor. Yeah at the level that we're called to love our neighbor, I have to know that level of love. Well, I'm just even thinking not only our neighbor, but unto our enemy. Oh, yeah. And so just even today in America, yeah. the, the aggressive, violent nature that some have towards the church. Yeah. And, and then I'm just gonna say, I'm extremely disappointed with the church mm -hmm. and our posture today. Yeah, we've, we've turned this into a political conversation and I'm going, guys, people are hurting. Yeah. People are deceived. Uh -huh. And that's the level of their condition. I mean, when I think of politics and racism, people are deceived and then racism there's generational pain. Yes. And stop, stop um, protecting yourself, coming up with arguments. Like, by first response is, these are human beings that the Father created. Yeah. They're in pain and they're deceived. What do you mean deceived? Like, like because okay. someone's going to hear that and go, what? Racism isn't real? No, no, sorry. I think on the political side. Oh, okay. On the political side, there's incredible deception that through politics, we're going to change the earth. But, and then even in our political, you know, beliefs, anywhere mm -hmm. from abortion to whatever, you know. Which we're against. 100%. But my point is, there's just such deception. Yes. That is then empowering anger and hate towards Christians. Right, right. And then there's, to me, racism, where we have people of color in, in America who are in great pain. Yeah. And we can't see that. Yeah. And we're not listening. We're not listening. Yeah. And I'm going, these are human beings. Yes. And I'm saying for the church to really be who we're going to be, because yeah. I know we're going there. Yeah. We have to be rooted yes. in something be other besides human love oh humanism. for sure for sure and i mean side point the the church that's growing the fastest it's not in the united states it's not under a republican regime it's under a communist regime it's under or oppression it's under or oppression. a dictatorship yeah. Yeah. so if we think salvation is going to come through a political party just look outside of our borders and see what god is doing in the church outside of america and that's where like 100 percent. and that's where it's just we have to be transformed yes. as the church i and guys um i'm gonna be saying this more and more um and I think hopefully I'll get more clear in my comments. So this is going to be a real general one. But I am, the church in America is so off. And some of you are going to disagree with me. And that's and we're that's, part of the church of America. I'm it's not, not like point, we're sitting I'm out. I'm not pointing fingers. I'm actually yes. saying we are off. Yeah. And some of us who are screaming you know, for all of these different things, I'm just like, guys, we're so off and we do not look like Jesus yeah and we're we look more like the world and the world systems than we do look like the way of Jesus mm -hmm. and I'm becoming more and more aware burdened and broken over this yes. and in my own state in yes. my own condition yes and my responses to people is is less and less like Jesus and more and more like my my neighbor who does not know the Lord. Uh -huh. And so I'm burdened over this yeah. and where we're putting our hope and everything. And I'm saying, let's be broken. Yeah. Let's yeah. accept 
I'd be like, Holy Spirit, come and show me my brokenness. Yes. Come and show me where I'm wrong. Yeah. And it's in this, because look at, um, we won't go much longer here because Jen's been talking a lot today and I just can't. <laughs> Her voice, I'm not joking, is often like... Um, <laughs> Like nails, sh- nails, nails on, on a chalkboard. On a chalkboard. Yeah, that's good, yeah, sweetie. Yeah, see right there. Thanks here. for washing me with the words, sweetie. Just kidding, everybody. <laughs> Just kidding. So here's another time where the father's voice breaks in, and and I love this story, and it's on the Mount of Transfiguration. And yeah. I might have we might have talked about this before on one p- a podcast in the past, but you know it's it's Jesus takes up his his you know Peter James and John the the, the disciples up onto a mountain and in this whole interaction he's transfigured Mm -hmm. he's changed Mm -hmm. and all of a sudden two heroes of the faith moses and elijah are talking to him and so peter and james and john are watching this can you imagine that'd be awesome like what an experience you know and and in that i i i you know, I can, I can kind of think like, why did the father want to break into this conversation? Mm -hmm. Like what was in the heart of the father? Because I'm pretty sure that Moses and Elijah knew the heart of the father. Mm -hmm. Jesus in his private times has been formed, strengthened by the voice of the, not formed because he's already, but strengthened by the voice of his father. Yeah. So, I think it's for Peter, James, and John mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to to be able to witness that affections of the Father and His heart. Mm. So we've 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 got Isaiah forty two that's been prophesied. We have already at the beginning of the ministry of Jesus, um, before He's done anything, the Father says, "I love this. He's my beloved Son." Mm-hmm. And now again, so verse five. While he was speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud. Mm. So the Father's, you get the essence that the Father's closer than he's been in the past, Mm. in even proximity. And he says, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And I love the next phrase, hear him. Oh, that's good. And, And so it's just this continual it's not only you know there's no question you know it's just even stupid to make this comment the identity of jesus he knew himself he knew who he was Mm -hmm. so part of our journey is to figure out who are we so what does the cross mean in regards to now i'm a new man now i am a a child i've been adopted i've been grafted in Mm-hmm. So we're still struggling in that. Jesus, are, he didn't do any of that. But Jesus still went forth in, in these inbreaks of affirmation, these, these, yes. these voices. Yes. And, and you know, because it's just, you know, some of us in the church are a little bit more, um, what's the word I can use? Um, distance in our theology on the emotions of God. Right. We're, we're more... We're, we're void of of that part of the communication of of God, and I and you know, and I grew up, yeah, God loves me, John three sixteen, but mm-hmm. it didn't touch me to where it was strengthening and, and was my place I wanted to live is mm-hmm. in that communing mm-hmm. voice of the Father, but in this, it to me it's just fascinating that there was a continuing on dialogue of the yeah. continued affirmation of the voice of the father over jesus right and if jesus needed it yeah how much more does Dwayne roberts need to live here yeah, yeah. it's not just a, a one encounter it's mm-hmm. not just a one-off mm-hmm. and i just got to say this there's two people on my mind right now um jason and olivia or you know, you guys are, I'm going to make sure you listen to this one because you guys are just been on my mind as we've been talking through this podcast. And, and I, you guys are in a, just a, 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 a stressful season of your life mm-hmm. and circumstances that have come at you have only mm-hmm. put you in a more stressful season. Mm-hmm. And I believe it's an opportunity. You know, Jennifer and I have mentioned this a couple of times, stress, challenging situations can give way to opportunity. Yeah. And I believe for you guys specifically, but for anybody who's listening who's in a challenging situation, 
this is an opportunity for the voice of the Father to begin to become that con continual, daily, strengthening, reinforcing, communing aspect. Mm -hmm. And often I'm finding it's in the place of brokenness that I am open to new ideas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is not working. I need something else to help, basically. Mm -hmm. And, or I'm in this situation, I can't find my way out, I need a new way out. And so this voice of the Father, this love of God, mm -hmm. it is the thing that I want to be shaping the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I want to love Jesus, and, but for me to, to love Jesus, for me to love the Father, for me to love the Holy Spirit, I have to, first of all, be immersed in their love towards me. Yeah. 100%. And, and just live there, dialogue there, be strengthened there, commune there, die there. Mm -hmm. Like, let my flesh, that cross, pick up my cross daily, mm -hmm. die to all of my ambitions, mm -hmm. to all of my dreams, mm -hmm. and first be rooted in the heart of the Father. And I feel like in many ways, it's that, as that happens, mm -hmm. the assignments in our life are going to become more yeah. clear. Yeah. Without that rooting, that understanding, that dwelling, we have nothing to give. Absolutely. Like nothing. Nothing. Apart nothing, from nothing. him, I can do no good thing. That's right. And the professional minister, which we have been, we have <clears> run <throat> hard. We have pushed up mountains. We have done all the things, all the campaigns, all the stuff. Mm -hmm. But there is a level of, I'm not going to discredit our life, but at the same token, I want to go, wait a minute. How much of that was just me wearing myself out until I finally die to my ambition yeah. and sit before him yeah. and find out in a fresh way I'm his child yes. and the privilege to abide and the privilege to not be discouraged because his pleasure is over me already. Yeah. It, it's a it's a transformative way to think. Yes. And now to look at my neighbor in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. From that vantage point, yeah. it, that is going to bear fruit. Absolutely. Like, um, we can wrap things up here, but um, Jennifer and I have just, I mean, I've never done so much reflection. Yeah. <laughs> in so my true. entire life and circumstances. Writing poems, Dwayne. Not quite there yet. <laughs> You know, I'll reach out to John Tyson. He's the poet. Um, but, like, the, I don't know. It's just this this place of reflection. Mm -hmm. And so just before we got on the podcast here, I'm going to be a little vulnerable. Do you have Kleenex? Yeah, babe. My okay. sleeve. You're so, one of my kids. <laughs> so Jennifer and I were having a discussion about, um, as we were preparing for this podcast, and just... And some instances came up where um, I had not been respected. Yeah. And um, it was, you know, this was, you know, five, five years ago. Yeah. And where I'd actually been really dishonored um, by a, an authority in my life, really disrespected and dishonored. And um, there was a part of me, how I responded to that was... Um, to to just pick up my boots and I don't need th I don't need that voice in my life to to define you. define me uh, I I can do it on my own and but in that there's that shame that is washed over me and in that there's that shame that you know what I maybe I'm not what I thought I was mm. or you know and and so authority has a powerful ability to form and shape us negatively. Yeah and positively yeah and I've been formed by many voices and as I'm doing a lot of self-reflection sorry this is just cleansing for the soul for Go on, bud. so this is so you guys can end right now I'm just gonna <laughs> keep talking because I <laughs> just love the sound of your own voice no it's not that <laughs> trust me it's more along the lines of just I am coming to the realization that there are voices that have formed and shaped me and some of them have left me with with uh being massively dishonored uh -huh. and, 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 and then shame. Yeah. And that whole idea, then I'm second to 42nd best. Uh -huh. And, and, and so that it's in that context where these lights are going off. No, I have incredible honor. Yeah. I have incredible dignity. Yeah. Um, I heard that word dignity from a friend of mine just recently and it's just like, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. 
and before my father, I have incredible dignity. Yeah. And men's opinions that have been, or men's uh, negative interaction with me does not form me. Yeah. The voice of the father who delights in me mm -hmm. forms me. Yeah. And so I just want to be, I just wanted to share that, not because, you know, I, not, it wasn't so much for me, but my point is I want, I want you guys to be encouraged that Jennifer and I are now into our 50s. Mm -hmm. And we don't be discouraged by this. Be encouraged by this. So if you're 22 listening, he's 52. It's going to take me that long. <laughs> no, don't, don't, that's not my point. My point is that I am continually reaching. And I want you to reach for this. Like, do not be content with where you're at. Mm -hmm. But go deep into the journey mm -hmm. of communion with God. Yeah. And what we're sharing today, it's these are formative and foundational truths that I believe you need. This is not a suggestion. And I'm not sharing this from a suggestion. I'm sharing this from you need this. Yeah. And go there. Take time. Slow your life down and go on a journey of going deep with God mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and going into those places of, of the caverns of his heart and camping there. Yeah. Amen. And letting him just reinforce strengthen your identity mm -hmm. and then introduce new thoughts of his delight mm -hmm. that you've never heard because satan is a liar and he wants to disfigure and dismantle god and yeah. his opinion yeah. over you that's right and so father today we just are grateful for the mm -hmm. word of god and we're grateful for the work of the holy spirit mm -hmm. that reveals the knowledge of the father and the yes. son and even now today just this has been a tender conversation. And so even those that are listening, I'm asking that you would strengthen them today yes. by these truths. Yes. Your delight, the same way that you love Jesus, Father, you love everyone who's listening. Mm -hmm. You love Jennifer. You love me. You love my family this way. Mm -hmm. And I want the delight of God mm -hmm. to be that thing that forms us. Father, yes. come and talk to me. Yes. Come and talk to everyone who's mm -hmm. listening to this, Lord. For we need you. Mm -hmm. We need you, and mm -hmm. you don't need me, mm -hmm. but you love me. Mm -hmm. And I want to just respond and into this invitation, to this communing. Father, come and wash over me. Yes. Strengthen me. Yes. Father, come and wash over me. Oh, divine encouragement so that I will not be discouraged mm -hmm. so that I will not fail in my journey mm -hmm. but faith would come you will not disappoint mm -hmm. faith will come you will not let me stumble and fall mm -hmm. amen amen bless you guys okay guys yeah bless you <laughs> yeah right want to thank you for listening it's been a delight okay I'm not sure what accent that yeah, is. Yeah, you're mixing them all up. Okay. All right, I'll just stop. God bless you guys, <laughs> and we'll see you again next time. Grace, grace. Meditate in these scriptures we talked about. Till next time. Ciao, ciao. Ciao.